Hello and welcome to Matt Presents, the show where I just talk about some movies I recommended. And uh, today we're looking at our first three movies. Uh, I showed these two weeks ago at a movie night I was holding. I'm holding another one tonight, and I will tell you the three movies I'm going to talk about tonight at the end of this video. So, probably you saw the introduction video, so let's just, you know, get into it. So my first movie night was on Friday the 13th, which, you know, like, first off, thematically appropriate because, you know, like, the whole horror, evil, unlucky thing about Friday the 13th. But I was also really happy to get to do it on the 13th because March 13th, 2020, marks the seven-year anniversary of the first bad movie night I was doing with my friends sometime in high school where, like, we should start doing bad movie nights. And those were not regular. That would just happen when we had time. This I'm going to try to keep consistent, you know, every other week. And I will be showing bad movies. Don't worry about that. Spoilers, by the way. We're going to talk spoilers for all these movies. So if you haven't seen them, be aware. I'll put that up at the top. This is this is a spoiler discussion. Uh, the first movie I showed was Beyond Valley of the Dolls, which um, is an insane fucking movie and absolutely exactly where I wanted to start with this series. It's a wild tale of this, like, rock band that moves to L.A. and one of them comes into, like, a bunch of money and they get wrapped up in, like, drugs and there's this, this like music producer who gets them involved in drugs. It's the ultimate party movie. They just fucking party all movie. Um, and it's just one of those movies that, like, there's nothing like it. Like, genuinely, I don't know if I want to count Beyond Valley of the Dolls as, like, a genuinely good movie, or if it's, like, a fun, bad movie. I flip back and forth between the two. Um, the big thing for me is, like, the editing. It's really choppy moment-to-moment -moment editing, but it, it almost works as its own style. Like, in some films that could be a problem, but in this film it totally works. Um, of course, infamously, it was written by uh, famed film critic... Roger Ebert. This is one of his few forays into film making, I guess. Uh, he wrote the script to this. He, he wrote a few other movies. This wasn't the only one, but this is the one he's remembered for. He wasn't, he wasn't as well known of a film critic at this point. This was 1970. So this would have been about the beginning of his uh, film critic career. I think what really launched him I mean, A, he was the first uh, film critic to win a Pulitzer Prize. So that pushed him into the mainstream. But he also had uh, Siskel and Ebert at the movies in the 80s. So that also boosted his profile a bit. He would probably be very upset that I showed this with Caligula because he fucking hated Caligula. Well, we'll get to that. Um, written by Roger Ebert. Directed by... Uh, the famous exploitation filmmaker, Russ Meyer. And it is the most readily available Russ Meyer film. Because it's on, like, Prime, it's on iTunes, there are two very easily accessible DVD Blu-ray releases of it. I have this Cinema Classics collection that I really like. It's like a nice two-disc collector's set. It's got this little envelope with some lobby cards. Um, but there's also, weirdly enough, a Criterion release of this movie. Which is like... <laughs> that there's a Criterion release of any Russ Meyer film is wild. But Beyond Valley of the Dolls. What an odd choice for the Criterion collection. I almost want it, even though... Even though I have this, which I think is a very nice DVD. I really want the Criterion Beyond Valley of the Dolls, because um, I think it's just wild that it even exists. This is 
sort of a fake sequel. The title Beyond Valley of the Dolls is clearly reminiscent of Valley of the Dolls. And in fact, uh, they had to take out advertisements to say, like, hey, this is not a sequel to Valley of the Dolls. And the, even in the opening of this movie, it's like, this is not a sequel to Valley of the Dolls. Even though the title's clearly a reference to it. I have Valley of the Dolls, I think. Yes, I do. There we go. Another Cinema Classics Collection edition of Valley of the Dolls, but... Valley of the Dolls is not nearly as interesting as Beyond Valley of the Dolls. It has a nice style to it. I like the style and the colors in the film, but overall, it's just not as entertaining as Beyond Valley of the Dolls. Because Valley of the Dolls is very, like... Uh, it's very... Oh, don't do drugs, or it'll ruin your career in the industry. And this one's more like, don't do drugs, or you'll get murdered by a trans man high on peyote. <laughs> I straight up forgot Z-Man was trans. That, that is probably my least favorite part of this movie, actually, upon a rewatch. is just that it kind of... That's such a trope in Hollywood... And I don't know if it was as much of a trope when this came out, but it was definitely after this, it became a trope that, like, oh, turns out the killer is not the sex they said they were. Ha <laughs> ha. He wasn't really a killer in this movie right up to the end. At the end, he's a killer when he's high on peyote. What a fucking wild movie. I love it. There's nothing like it. Both in terms of how weird the story is, and in terms of how weirdly edited it is. The editing is weird. Uh, everything about it's weird. Everything about it's unique. And I love that very much. So with Beyond Valley of the Dolls and with Psychomania, I feel like watching those would give you sort of a good idea of, like, who I am, and what types of movies I like to watch. Caligula is a fucking warning shot. Like, if you can sit through Caligula, you'll probably be able to sit through anything I want to show. One of my friends said, like, oh, Matt presents porn. And I'm like, look, man, if I set the bar high for the types of things I show on this show, anything else I show will not be as shocking as Caligula. I came out the gate with this. I was actually a little surprised just how pornographic it was. Like, I expected there to be a lot of nudity and a lot of fucking, but there's just, like, actual real sex. And, like, like you couldn't fake the shit in this movie. Like, usually in a movie, you'll see two people fucking, and it'll be at an angle just enough where, like, you can't actually see the penetration, which, to be fair, is usually because they're trying to get an R rating. Um, <laughs> like to point out, uh, Beyond Valley of the Dolls, X-rated, Caligula, unrated. There was an R-rated cut. I looked it up. It was 52 minutes shorter. Um, so I was kind of surprised at how pornographic this was, but honestly, I didn't dislike it. I, I enjoyed a lot of it, because it wasn't... I was worried it was going to be really gross, and it wasn't gross. It was, like, right on that line of poor taste, where you're like, you know, it's it's kind of funny that they went this far. It's, I, I get entertainment from just how far they managed to take it. Now, uh, your mileage is going to vary on this. I, I have very odd tastes. I like that type of stuff. I did still have problems with it, obviously. Uh, the plot seems a little aimless, and it just goes on for so fucking long. It's a two and a half hour movie. So, it has taught me a very important lesson. Don't show movies longer than two hours. That, moving forward, I will not be showing movies over two hours at Matt Presents. 
I might make some exceptions, but uh, as of right now, two hours is the limit, because this is like two and a half, and it was just so fucking long. My god. I feel like there was a lot of stuff you could trim, because like at some point, the shock wears off. It's like, yeah, okay, I get it. They're having an orgy. Move along. Come on, let's get to the next scene. Come on. I feel like there was no escalation. That's my problem with the plot. Because, like, to read the actual story of Caligula, he kind of, like, people liked him, and then he became emperor, and then he kind of went insane. So I would have liked the story with a little more escalation to the insanity, but Caligula is an insane bastard right from the beginning, and, like, right from the first scene, in the first like, couple scene In the first 20, 30 minutes, they're having orgies already. So when it happens again later, it's like, yeah, we already saw this. You, you already blew your load, movie. There are some blown loads in this movie. Jesus fuck. Yeah, I don't know that I would recommend Caligula. Um, it is one of those movies that has quite the reputation. And I will say, for movies with reputations... Uh, it's a lot easier of a sit than, like, Sallow or even Cannibal Holocaust, although I kind of like Cannibal Holocaust. Uh, it, it's a much easier sit than a lot of the other movies with similar reputations. This is, uh, the DVD version. I looked, there is a Blu-ray version, which kind of surprised me. I feel like this would be even more pornographic in high definition because there's a lot of people, like, way in the background that you're like, they got their dick out, but I can't see their dick, so we're not going to count it, you know? Uh, I, I, there is a bit of a story with this DVD case, because I bought Caligula, the unrated edition, and it, it had a big hole in the top of the DVD case. Um, and then... I also had The Devil's Reign, and The Devil's Reign had a bunch of stickers on the box, so I took the cover for Devil's Reign out of the box with all the stickers on it and put it in the box for Ben and Arthur. Because Ben, I didn't have a cover for Ben and Arthur, so when I did my review of Devil's Reign, I just stuck the cover for Devil's Reign in the nicer-looking Ben and Arthur case, and then I'm like, there's no reason to keep Devil's Reign, I'm never going to watch it again. So, I put Devil's Reign in the box with a hole on it for Caligula, and put Caligula in the Ben and Arthur box. So, Ben and Arthur originally came in this box, and I stuck the cover of Caligula on it, stuck Caligula inside it. So now it's the box for Caligula, so it looks a little nicer. All-Star cast, one of the things I really appreciate about this film is how much dedication they put into it. Because it is, like, a historical epic. Like, they've got all these big, grand Roman set pieces. And uh, for his part, Malcolm McDowell does a great job in the lead here. Peter O'Toole's in it. Helen Mirren's in it. They all do really good jobs. It's like a million-dollar movie. They, they, they put effort into this for something that is just, like, pornographic exploitation. So, yeah, it's a weird sort of uh, contrast there of, like, the content of the movie and, like, the scope of the movie. So you don't expect a, a big epic like this to be that big. Directed by, well, credited to director Tinto Brass. Um, he actually got fired at some point. And there were, I think, three or four directors on the film. I really w like to watch a documentary on the making of Caligula. It, it seems like an insane process. So lastly, I'm going to talk about Psychomania, an underrated gym I just love so much. Uh, the story of the biker gang. The biker gang leader discovers that... His mother's a witch, and his mother teaches him 
if he, like, really believes he can come back, if he kills himself and really believes he can come back, he can form, like, a pact with the devil and come back to life. And once you're back to life, you can only die once. So, at that point, you're unstoppable. And apparently it also makes his motorcycle immortal, because at one point he crashes through a brick wall. And it's like, sure, he could survive that, but his motorcycle couldn't. So I guess the spell also works on his motorcycle for some reason. And then he, uh, he teaches all of his friends in the biker gang how to do this. And so they're this immortal biker gang who go around wrecking shit. It's a, it's a really fun movie. <laughs> I like that there's not really a good guy to this film. It's just a bunch of, like, shit, shitty bikers, you know, going around being bad people. <laughs> they use their power for evil. That's the plot of the movie. They use their power for evil. <laughs> they don't really explain what all the pact entails, so that's kind of weird. Um, also, the ending, I was kind of confused the first time I watched it, because it kind of just seemed like his mother's like, oh no, he shouldn't be teaching other people this, I have to stop him. But the second time around, I got the impression it wasn't so much that he taught other people the trick, it was just that they were using their powers for evil. So I get that. Psychomania, called Death Wheelers, here in America. Which I think is a way better title. What the fuck does Psychomania mean? What the fuck, Britain? I have the Arrow Video Blu-ray release. I originally saw this movie because it's free on Amazon Prime. I was watching just a whole bunch of, like, satanic B-movies because I was working on uh, top ten worst satanic movies or whatever the video was called. Top ten worst satanic movies I haven't already talked about in some capacity. So I was watching a bunch of, like... Uh, obscure satanic B-movies, and a few of them, I'm like, these are actually good. Like, uh, this one was my favorite of all of them. There were two or three in there, I'm like, God, this is, like, really good. Why does no one talk about this movie? Um, why does no one talk about Psychomania? It's such a good movie. Um, so then I found out Arrow had done a release of it, and I had to snap that up very fast. Arrow Video is a great distributor, a uh, British distributor, but they've started distributing stuff to America. Um, sort of the, like, Criterion collection for obscure horror movies. Uh, they've got some original artwork for the film, but it's a reversible cover. Which I, I always love that. A lot of companies do that. They'll do, like, original artwork, but it'll be a reversible cover so you can put the original cover on the outside. Because I like to have the original cover most of the time. Nice little booklet in here about psychomania. That's the thing. This skull looks more like what they actually look like in the movie, not the skull on the cover. I don't know, Psychomania, fun as all hell. I love it. Um, very glad to have gotten to show that to some people. So, last week I asked you, uh, what are some movies you'd like to see me recommend for this, uh, show? And I'm actually gonna have to look up the gentleman's name. Uh, The Chris Show suggested a film called Mark of the Devil. Good news, Chris, I have Mark of the Devil. Another nice Arrow Video Blu-ray edition right there. Uh, I am a huge fan of Mark of the Devil, and I will very much be recommending this some night. Not tonight, but eventually. Uh, expect to see Mark of the Devil. Great movie. I actually kind of like having the shelf right behind me, because I, I can reference a movie and then, like, turn around and pull it off the shelf. Just as long as I don't mention anything... Like, A through D, which is all on the top shelf there. I can, I can reach this one. That's a little out of reach. Uh, my friend Michael of Movie Mackle also recommended the film Chum Scrubbers, which uh, I thought was a Shark Tale joke. Um, 
So if you don't know Michael's channel, he does like a, an April Fool's video where he talks about Shark Tale every year. So, but that uh, it's apparently a real movie, and also was on my watch list, so uh, that might be a recommendation in the future. Uh, a few other people named some stuff, so thank you all very much for your recommendations. They are all being taken into account. So, this week's question is... Should all of these triple features be sort of connected? Should there be some sort of overarching theme? Or are you guys okay with a more grab bag style? Because I have a lot of themed triple features, but just to start us off, I've got some sort of grab bag stuff. So um, we're going to tone it down a little this week from the pornography of Caligula. Although we're still doing some really weird shit, I'm going to recommend Quentin Dupont's Rubber. Um... Probably his most well-known film. Definitely his best film that I've seen. I've seen two or three movies from Quentin Dupont. Uh, then we're going to recommend a film called Vampire Hookers. It's a part of this box set I've got here. <laughs> Haven't seen it. Vampire Hookers. Very much looking forward to it. Finally, I'm going to recommend The Poseidon Adventure. It's been on my watch list for a while. One of the, like classic 70s uh, disaster movies about a ship that capsizes. So that's going to be the final film of next week. So uh, let me know what you think of those movies. Uh, let me know what you think of, you know, three random films versus, like, a themed triple feature. And until next time, I'm Matt. Have a nice day.